name's Janet Bay, I'm the Vice-Chancellor of Oxford Brookes University and um, one of the things I'd like to do as a part of this short film is to talk to you about what the Corporate Responsibility Workshops are for. They are aimed at engaging staff in what Corporate Responsibility at Brooks might look like in the future so that we can inform a strategic vision of how Brooks can implement a full Corporate Responsibility Programme. The ideas that come out of these workshops will allow a strategy to be developed on how Brooks can go about becoming such a university. We want to have a net positive impact in the community. Our working definition of what corporate social responsibility will look like at Brooks is that it is about our behaviour. It's about the behaviour of the university, how we manage our responsibility for our impact on the societies in which we operate. Um, being proactively responsible to our stakeholders will enable the university to show that we are working for the common good. One of the things that um, the Senior Management Conference, which worked on the draft white paper, uh, which included our mission, vision and values, was insistent about that we should have fewer, grander values. And one of our, one of our values, as articulated in the white paper, is that social responsibility demands that all aspects of our activity should be sustainable. Equality, inclusivity and the celebration of diversity must be the foundation for all that we do. And as I said, we're very clear that that needs to be demonstrated, both in terms of uh, our vision, our values and our mission. We want to live up to our ambition to be the kind of institution that privileges social responsibility. And, um, Again, your input into these workshops will help us uh, articulate how we can best uh, achieve our goals. Our goal is to have a strategic vision for the future of corporate social responsibility at Brooks and how we can achieve those ambitions by May 2010. By this time we aim to have produced the university's first sustainability report. There are many activities currently taking place at Brooks which highlight the potential we have to fully embrace uh, CR and have a net positive impact on our community. Brooks is a leader in many areas. The Functional Food Centre at Brooks is the UK's first research centre of its kind. It's an excellent example of a holistic approach to engaging with the marketplace, the marketplace of students, business and communities. Hi, my name is J.R. Henry and I'm the Professor of Food Science and Nutrition at Oxford Brooks University and the director of the newly founded Functional Food Centre. The Functional Food Centre at Oxford Brookes University is the first of its kind in the UK, uh, whose primary goal is to provide research and consultancy activities to the food sector. So we are a centre that provides research and consultancy for small and medium-sized companies in the UK and to large multinationals but also to countries in developing world where we believe very strongly that they also need aspects of first-hand research and consultancy to improve the quality of their lives. But I want to say that no university or any centre around the world can ignore the plight of people that are less fortunate than, than us in terms of health provision and the provision of nutrition. And our primary goal is to provide a facilitating centre that provides research and opportunities to create better foods for people whether they live in Europe or in the developing countries of the world. Brooks prides itself on its excellent working environment. The Love and Justice Month earlier this year saw the university provide free events for staff, students and the local community which allowed them to consider other people's experiences and perspectives on the world. I'm Michelle Montgomery, I'm the, one of the HR business partners here at Brooks and I have particular responsibility for equality and diversity, primarily for staff, but with equality schemes and those sorts of things it does tend to encompass in some respects students as well. We've always tried to encourage staff to think about diversity and equality and in previous years we've run events, sort of a, a disability awareness week, a diversity week, but we decided that this year we wanted to do something a bit more ambitious and that was different from the traditional diversity uh, week. So we had uh, a month which we called Love and Justice, which was the idea was to get staff, students and the general public to think about what 
diversity, what human rights relationships meant to them. We had workshops for local charities running recently, so staff from Brooks offered their skills, so we had HR, IT, um, marketing, and charities could come for free, book an appointment and get some free advice and guidance from us. We've had the Prince's Trustee to talk about mentoring and we've done some work on how to become a trustee. Brooks Centre for Sport is running a summer hockey school engaging children from local schools and hockey clubs. My name's Greg Wade, I'm the community hockey coach for Oxford, uh, which involves various different roles, one of which is running the hockey camp that we've got going on here for the summer. Uh, we've got 50 kids on the register all spending the week uh, improving their skills and, and having a bit of fun. This is the third summer one that we've done but we also run one uh, October half term and at Easter. This is the, the best turnout we've had so far but it's taken three years to, to develop. Uh, these kids come from the local schools, the local clubs um, and we promote that through the, the work that I do in the schools and the clubs and sending flyers out and things like that. Uh, there are a wide range of abilities and ages, we go right from 8 up to 16 and we've got some complete beginners up to some people that are in the kind of England hockey uh, performance programme and really this, the camp is a chance for them to come and have a bit of fun. It's a total mix of different people so they're playing with other people from different clubs, it's not all the same people that they meet week in, week out. The involvement from Brooks is really quite important, they put a significant amount of funding into the project, but also other things like the students um, help out on the school tournaments that I run. So the students are able to get, some of them are on the coaching studies course, so they come and help out, so it certainly benefits the students in that sense. Community wise, the hockey clubs I know have seen an increase in the quality and the numbers of the kids that are joining their clubs. And the other side of it is that um, there wasn't anything going on in, in, in Oxford hockey-wise really before, so this is a brand new opportunity that's developed over the last three years. Um, the quality of, of, the, of hockey in Oxford has improved. You know, all these kids are here getting out, being active, being involved in something that's positive. The MSC in Primate Conservation at Brooks is a pioneering programme which started in the year 2000 and was awarded the highly prestigious Queen's Anniversary Prize for Higher and Further Education in 2008. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Simon Bearder and I work in the Department of Anthropology and Geography in the School of Social Sciences and Law. And um, my role with the MSC in Primate Conservation is as, as chair of the, um, the development committee. We sort of set it up and, and had the idea for it uh, nearly 10 years ago. It's one of the only M MSCs of its kind in the world, and so people come to Oxford from all over the world, come to Oxford Brooks, in order to take this course. One of the main advantages of, of the course that we offer in Oxford is that um, we have uh, quite a few so-called habitat country students students who have worked in the countries where the, the primates, uh, the non-human primates, live. And they have a great understanding of the conservation situation on, on the ground. And they come to Oxford and they inform all the other students who may come from Europe or America or, or Britain. And they inform them about the realities of conservation and, and why it's important. And by giving the Habitat Country students a, a training, we provide them with a qualification as well when they go, and they go back to their own countries and they work there to help protect the last remaining wildlife. Well, Oxford Brooks University, I think, is going to have to take note of all the activities of the staff and the students, many of which have to do with concern for environmental issues, green issues, sustainability issues, What's the future of the world going to be like? Most of the staff and students who come to this university, they know in the back of their mind that we are extracting too many resources from a finite uh, resource base and that we cannot continue to do it. In order to live the lives that, we've, uh, that we now have, we would have to have two or three Earths to provide that number of resources. We all know that's not possible. We have to face up somehow to the realities um, of the future. And uh, the students and staff 
uh, are so enthusiastic about this that if the whole university doesn't move and become greener and more environmentally aware and more concerned about the future of our environment, then uh, it's going to lag far behind other universities. So my feeling personally is that the university should take hold of every initiative, every opportunity to move in that direction and become a leader in that sphere. We were the world's first fair trade university. Uh, we achieved that status in 2003 and since then uh, we have continued to demonstrate our commitment to the international community. As with any large organisation we have an impact on the local, national and international environment. In order to reduce our negative and increase our positive environmental impact, Brooks has built up a dedicated team to oversee this. This has resulted in Brooks being named the third greenest university in the UK in 2009. We've carried out the groundwork for the Corporate Responsibility Programme by mapping the scope of current activities taking place at Brooks. We have identified that there's a vast and diverse range of activities taking place with enormous potential for everyone involved in the university to participate. From staff and students right through to communities and environments everywhere that our influence touches. It's clear that we need to have a strategic approach to corporate responsibility at Brooks and it is through these workshops that we can draw on your ideas to inform us how to take the corporate responsibility programme forward. We want to move into a future where Brooks is not just recognised as a leading progressive university, but also championed for having a net positive impact on its various communities through its corporate responsibility programme.